Hello friends, so here we are once again with the new topic sex determination. Now the topic what we have covered in last lecture was chromosomal theory of inheritance that too with a specific proof experimental proof by Morgan. Now in this lecture <coughs> we are going to see sex determination that is determining sex whether developing embryo will become male or female. Now according to Mendel or according to the Morgan whatsoever uh, idea we have gained till now is that there are so many characteristic features that an organism can be having maybe structural maybe functional characteristic features and all the characteristic feature of an individual has to be carry forwarded into the next generation. Now forwarding this generation uh, forwarding this character into the next generation is termed as heredity. Now the other terminology is variation which is a change in the character which is observed while heritating the character from one generation to the other. Now there are a specific type of gene or genes which are responsible for heredity or maintenance of the character within an organism that is control of that trait. So usually one gene is responsible for controlling one expression in a particular organism. So in that case we can say that a characters are controlled by genes. Now as there are so many characters the sex of an individual that is sexually reproducing organism is also one of the most important trait. So determining the sex is also one of the important character termed as very important character of an individual. So it is individual characteristic feature according to the difference in the sex as we know that there are two types of organisms can be possible one can be male one can be female. So as if it is uh, the character definitely it should be controlled by genes or in the other word chromosomes. So that concept whether sex is controlled by or sex is determined by a particular type of chromosomes that are genes is known as sex determination into the other term. So that way we can say that we have specialized chromosome which are controlling sex determination process. So that we can say we have two sets of chromosome. First set is autosome and second set is sex chromosomes. So first set is termed as autosomes because they are responsible for controlling your structural functional uh, all types of uh, the traits which are not actually uh, connected with your either sexual behavior or sexual structure and function. So that set of chromosomes which are controlling those kind of character which are not linked with either sexual structure or sexual function is called autosome. right? So autosomes are controlling your structure, function that is physiological or uh, what we can say metabolism. 
So, they are responsible for controlling all the physiological functions and metabolism and your structural aspect. But if we talk about the second set of chromosome, they are responsible for maintenance of sexual structures that is gonads and secondary sexual characters. So, those are termed that allosomes as well. So, sex chromosomes are also termed as allosomes. So, autosomes and allosomes there are two terms what we are in general going to be used while discussing all those characters. So, what we know till now is humans are having 23 pairs of the chromosomes. Chromosome number 1 to 22 are known as autosomes or are considered to be autosomes and last pair of the chromosome that is X and Y chromosome that last pair is termed as allosome right. So, let us <coughs> define the autosomes and sex chromosomes. Autosome first they are the chromosome other than the sex chromosomes and number of autosome is same in males and females. For example, humans are having number 1 to 22 there are 22 pairs of the chromosome known as autosomes. So, th they used to be similar in both males and females right and if I talk about the sex chromosome that is X and Y they are the chromosomes which are controlling the sexual traits and their expressions right. So, they involved into the sex determination and they are different as we know that into males and females. In male it is x y and in female they are x x. Now, if I talk about the history of this entire concept. So, that is named on hanging in 1891 he studied the spermatogenesis of some insects and he discovered a specific type of distribution of chromosome. He observed that 50 percent of the sperms are having a specific chromosome. in their nucleus right and 50 percent of the sperms do not contain that now he gave the name x body to that chromosome later on so many discoveries has been made on the X body and it finally has concluded it as X chromosome. So, X chromosome were was discovered by hanging right. So, that is a brief history of sex chromosome. So, we have basically two types of chromosome number one autosome number two allosomes allosomes are of two type x and y. By that we are concluding this slide. So, please take the uh, screenshot of this slide first then we move to the other. Right. Now, we are going to discuss types of sex determination or mechanism types of the mechanism of the sex determination. So, we can see there are three types of sex determination, three mechanism of sex determination where first mechanism, first type of mechanism of sex determination is x x x 0 mechanism. Now, 
if you see here there are two types xx x0 two sets of chromosome we can say now xx is termed as homozygous set of chromosome and x this is zero because they don't have uh, the other chromosome other pair of chromosome so either an organism is having xx or n organism is having only one x chromosome so it is heterozygous so heterozygous or heterogametic right one gamete is containing x other is containing x one gamete is containing x the other uh, is containing zero so heterogametic or heterozygous now in this case x x is used to be female and x0 is used to be as male right so that way uh, control of uh, the sex of an organism is observed and that mechanism is known as xx x0 mechanism generally or usually they are found into the insects specifically like uh, grasshopper uh, uh, honey bee etc so here males are heterogametic that is x0 so their gametes are with x chromosome and half of the gametes are containing no other chromosome right so half of with x chromosome half with or oh sorry without x chromosome so that was the conclusion right of hanking so hanking has observed 50% of the chromosome uh, 50% of the gametes with x chromosome so here it is proving that same theory right and female all are all gametes which are produced are containing x chromosomes so they are considered to be xx and male is considered as x0 and the example of this kind of mechanism are almost majority of the insects including grasshopper so this is the first mechanism xx x0 mechanism please take the screenshot now the second mechanism of sex determination is xx xy mechanism here also two sets of the chromosomes can be observed xx and xy xx homologous xy heterologous x x are female same as the earlier and x y is male same as earlier mode of or earlier mechanism of sex determination but only changes they both are having pair of the chromosome x x are also pair and x y is also a pair of chromosome so their heterozygosity contain only one chromosome here heterozygosity contain two chromosome that is the difference so if we consider here male is heterogametic with x and y chromosome and female is homogametic containing only x chromosome and two example humans and drosophila are given similar as given into the textbook right so this is the second mode of the sex determination please take the screenshot 
Now, third mode of sex determination is ZZ, ZW mechanism. It is almost similar to XXXY mechanism, but only change is that here ZZ that is homozygous are males. and heterozygous that is Z W are females. So, determination process is reversed by homozygosity and heterozygosity here and this kind of mechanism is generally observed into the birds right so it is known as zz zw mechanism now <coughs> here males are homogametic containing only z chromosome and females are heterogametic containing z and w two different types of chromosomes and birds are the example of this mechanism of sex determination right. So, this way there are three types of the sex determination generally observed into the nature specifically into the sexually mode of reproduction x x x 0 and x x x y mechanisms show male heterogamity and z z z w mechanism shows female heterogamity that is the difference between both of them ready. So, please take the screenshot of this slide. Now, going more specific into the sex determination, let us discuss first about the sex determination in humans. Humans are showing x x x y type of sex determination process as we all know right humans are having 23 pairs of the chromosomes in that 22 pairs are autosomes and only one pair of the chromosome is termed as allosome. So, the pair of X chromosome are seen into the female and X and Y both chromosomes are seen in male. So, mother and father both are having different types of chromosome into the gametes right. Father half of the chromosome sorry half of the sperms will be containing Y chromosome and half of the sperms will be containing X chromosome but mother whatsoever eggs will be produced all will be having X chromosome only. <coughs> so, here 50 percent of Y chromosome and 50 percent of X chromosome whereas, here 100 percent X chromosome. So, if these Y chromosome containing sperm if fertilizes the egg then offspring will be having X and Y chromosome X from mother and Y from father and that will be converted into male. And if this X chromosome containing sperm is fertilizing the egg containing X chromosome both chromosome will be X x from the father and x from the mother and that is how developing embryo will be converted into the females. So, this is how the determination of sex is controlled into the humans. So, sex determination of human is known as xx and xy type 
and it shows these kind of process. Please take the screenshot of the slide. Now, if we uh, go a bit deep into control of this Y chromosome, out of X and Y, Y is considered as the dominant chromosome. Y is dominant on X. So, in the presence of Y chromosome, developing embryo is going to be male and if Y is not present, then and then only developing embryo will be female. Now, what is present on Y chromosome which is responsible for converting the embryo into male? So, Y chromosome is containing a specific gene known as SRY gene. Now, this SRY gene is responsible for producing a specific or special type of protein called TDF. Full form of TDF is testis determining factor. So, it is determined or it is allowing a particular cells to be converted or differentiate into testis. So, it is converting a specific type of cells of gonads into testis. So, TDF factors induces the medulla of embryonic gonad to develop into testis. This is the effect of TDF factor which are produced by the SRY genes which are present on the Y chromosome. Right? So, this is the mechanism of control of the trait by Y chromosome that Y chromosome how it is converting the embryo into the male. So, testis will be produced and this testis will produce testosterone hormone and entire secondary sexual characters also can be controlled primary sexual characters of male also be controlled by this testosterone and this is how these sex determination is controlled right so <coughs> genes which are present on a particular character are responsible for controlling this kind of mechanisms fine please take a screenshot of this slide this is a similar mechanism is uh, 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 again defined right so during spermatogenesis males are producing two types of gametes 50 percent of them are containing X chromosome and 50 percent of them are containing Y chromosome. But females are producing only one type of chromosome that contains X chromosomes. So, there is a 50 percentage of chance that is equal probability of fertilization of ovum with sperm carrying either X or Y chromosome. So, if you see the representation, the males can produce two types of chromosome, uh, sorry, two types of gametes, but females producing only a single type of gamete or egg. So, spun can be having 22 autosomes and one pair, uh, one set that is X chromosome or Y chromosome. Here A is termed as allo, uh, sorry, autosomes 
<coughs> so 22 autosome and 1 X chromosome or 22 autosome and 1 Y chromosome. Now Y it is 44 because this is the process which is uh, demonstrating the cell division. Look it is spermatogenesis which is meiosis process. So, during cell cycle whatsoever cell is going to be divided it is going into the cell cycle and in S phase genetic material gets doubled. Why? Because they have to be divided into two sets right. So, genetic material is going to be divided into the S phase and that is why it is 44 autosomes which are demonstrated here. So, please do not get confused by that ready. Uh, sometimes if you see it will be uh, 2 into 44 a and x y and that will be showing 2 set of chromosome right. Now, the number is reduced and that is why meiosis is also termed as reductional division right. So, only one set of chromosome is going to be transported or transferred into the gamete. So, that we can maintain the number of chromosome into the next generation. So, one chromosome one set of chromosome from male and one set of chromosome from female after fertilization will be coming into the zygote. So, again 22 plus 22 44 autosomes and 1 allosomes. So, if sperm containing X chromosome is fertilizing the egg then that developing zygote will be containing X X chromosome and it is going to be female. And if the sperm containing Y chromosome is fertilizing the egg containing X then zygote will be containing 44 autosomes and X and Y and that will be uh, that zygote is uh, developed or is going to be developed in as a male. So, that is the mechanism what we have seen of controlling the sex determination by X and Y chromosome into the humans. Please take the screenshot of this slide so that we can move ahead. Now, similar type of X X X Y type of mechanism is uh, seen into so many different organisms, but a special type of sex determination process is also observed into the honeybee right. Now, if I talk about honeybees mechanism of sexual mode of reproduction, they are showing a particular type of mechanism for sex determination where male and female are controlled not by heterozygosity or homozygosity, but it is controlled by haploidy or diploidy. If you see here males are haploid and females are diploid. So, if an organism is or if a B is haploid then always is uh, they are considered to be male and if they are diploid then they are female right. So, let us discuss more specific to their sex determination process. Now, first of all we are going to be uh, discussing uh, going, uh, going to discuss about uh, the economical importance of honeybee. Honeybees are so important into the uh, environment because 
they are one of the most important factor which is responsible for spreading the uh, the gametes right so pollen grains which are produced by the various types of plants are transported by uh, the honeybee right so pollen grains uh, the job of honeybee is what they are collecting the honey from one flower to the other that is why they have a very important role into the pollen transfer right so pollination is uh, done by uh, this male into the 90 percent of flowering plant so they have uh, very huge economical importance as far as uh, the pollen uh, pollination is concerned so honeybees are one of the most important organism which are transporter of pollen grains now they are also uh, sexually mode of reproduction uh, is seen into uh, into them so they are sexually reproducing organism but as we know that sexual mode of reproduction is based on the favorable condition and it is uh, not found that all the times uh, these honeybees are uh, found uh, or uh, are getting the favorable condition so mode of reproduction are divided into the two categories if they have favorable condition then male and female both are producing respective gametes for example diploid female produces eggs by process of meiosis and haploid male produces sperm look uh, any of the gamete must be haploid as we know right so if i talk about female there are two n that is diploid and if it has to be con converted into haploid egg it has to go through the process of meiosis but if i talk about males males are haploid so haploid auto uh, the body cells when they are divide and convert into sperm gamete so haploid is going to divide as haploid only so there is no reduction into set of chromosome or addition into the sex chromosome so where similar number of the chromosome number of chromosome is maintained then it is mitosis not meiosis so there is no meiosis observed into the males so male are dividing by mitosis with reference to producing sperm so eggs and sperms are fertilized right so females are heterozygous and homozygous two types of females can be seen so if they are heterozygous a and b right so a from one side and b from one side or b and b from both the sides so ab or bb two types of heterozygous or homozygous females can be produced uh, mind it very well that here homozygosity or heterozygosity is not at all responsible for sex determination as male or female so there is uh, there is no concern at all with these homozygosity or heterozygosity ready now in the case of unfavorable condition the eggs which are produced by females by meiosis straightway without fertilization they are converted into an organism right so female diploid eggs haploid and when they are straightway converting to the embryo definitely those embryo cells 
or those organisms are going to be haploid. That is why males are always haploid. Right? So, why males are haploid and females are diploid is uh, controlled by set of chromosome whether it is single or double haploid or diploid. So, diploids are always female and haploid will be always male. So, this is what you are supposed to uh, take into the consideration. Right? Now, specific mechanism where egg is converted into the young one without fertilization that process that special type of mechanism is termed as parthenogenesis right now as we know that econom economically honeybees are very important into the nature and that is why it is important to maintain the number of honeybees and that is why during unfavorable condition also they can produce their offspring right and this is the reason why this mechanism has been evolved. So, based on the number of sets of the chromosomes that individual receives, right, this sex determination is controlled. Now, if an offspring formed from uh, union of the sperm and egg develops as female. So, if fertilization occurs, then they are female. But if unfertilized egg is developing, then it is male or drawn. Now, the process is parthenogenesis as we have discussed earlier. Right? So, please take the screenshot of this slide. Fine. Now, honeybee are having male and female is diploid and haploid organism what we have discussed till now right so females are having 32 chromosome and males are having 16 chromosome male produces the gamete by process of mitosis right and females are producing two types of gametes by meiosis now, if fertilization is occurred between male and female gamete, then the offspring is going to be female. This is the first type of reaction what is observed. Right? So, unfavorable condition if they found, then that way the egg without fertilization is converted into the male. So, that is the process what we have termed as parthenogenesis. So, <coughs> females are diploid containing 32 chromosome and males are haploid containing 16 chromosome. Right? And this kind of mechanism is haploid diploid sex determination system. In this system, males produce sperm by mitosis. This is first characteristic feature. Right? They do not have father and thus cannot have sons. Look, if I talk about males, Right. If I talk about males, if you see parental generation of male, this is male, it is produced only by female and there is no role of the other male to produce the male offspring. So, they do not have father into that sense. Ready? That is why, if I say only female can produce the son, not male, because if male is involved into the reproduction, they always produce female. 
study so they don't have father and they cannot produce the son similarly they have grandfather and can have the grandchildren how for example there is a male which is producing female and that female can again produce the male ready so this relationship of male number 1 to male number 2 is grandfather and grandson relationship so in that sense we can say that the male do not have father cannot produce son and they have grandfather and grandson relationship only so this are the mechanism of sex determination right so here i am concluding the pro, uh, the topic of sex determination and we are continuing into the next lecture uh, with process of mutation uh, uh, do take very good care of yourself by and have a nice time